send the video to, but uh, updated video because updated audio. And this book has a lot of content in it. We can discuss. I did take apart the, um, what do you call it, the cover because it was getting like destroyed and I don't know, it just doesn't like age well, if that makes sense. Also, I wanted to tap on the cover, that sounded really cool. I could do like a whole video on that too. I don't know if you guys really care about that, but it is something and uh, we could potentially do. Now, I haven't opened this book in a while. This is the Japanese Candlestick Charting Techniques by Stephen Nielsen. Sorry, Steve Nielsen. Um, yeah, it's a super good book, to be honest. There's so much information about it. I think it's a great way to get started about learning how to actually do technical analysis by looking at candlestick charting, which is basically where price and volume, or sorry, yeah, right, the price action is derived from. So it's like all the information. Not going to go super in-depth about this, um, like, I guess book, but we I do want to flip to some pages about it and talk about those things. I think I'll leave a link in the description if anybody wants this book. But, I mean, yeah, you, can, you can't, I guess it's, this book's really hard to find. I don't think you can get it in a store. I've never seen it, like, in Barnes & Noble or anything, but they also put a bunch of Japanese stuff here. Um, actually, I have no idea what that says, but anyway, I, man, it's been a while since I went through this book. Oh, uh, actually, I can show you guys the preface, let's see, like, what's in the book, uh, the background about, I guess, uh, I, I guess, I guess Steve took this from the Japanese, like, culture, and how they, they he does say in the, in the background about how he took that and figured out what they were doing with the measuring price and time and then you take a volume of how much was transacted in that period and you could get this like three dimensional is it three dimensional uh not really maybe it doesn't matter though it's a good way to gather data about about like a market and demand and stuff but anyway he's got reversal patterns star patterns more reversal patterns continuation patterns that's the one that i mostly look at i don't do reversals too much the doji, then we have convergence, candles with trend lines. So yeah, as we learn about the actual candles, then we get into the patterns. I don't get like super into detail when I do trading though, or even investing, like there's a lot of information, a lot to digest, and it's like, is it needed? I don't know. Hajimewa, that, uh, Titan, yeah. Hajimewa, Titan, the beginning is most in. Historical background. I'm gonna skip this. Um, to the market, nothing matters unless the market reacts to it. I mean, yeah, I guess. Uh, what happened to the exchange of base? I don't know. I'm just seeing what I wrote. Let's see. Exchange um, skills and such strategy. Let's get into. I don't want to do reversal patterns because I don't really. You know, it's 
it's just it's just the game though, but um, same thing the other way around. Although sometimes I have seen this to be bullish though. Is it Af maybe he mentioned that here, but yeah, the island formation is either bullish or bearish depending on where it is in the trend. Super important. If um, you start to identify it at the bottom of the trend, like like here, you know, that could be bullish. And uh, I mean, yeah, I, I don't see how that would be bearish to be honest. Let's see. Sorry, before I got up to like close the door because it was open, it was making there was too much noise. But so I mean, uh, let's see if I can zoom in. signal this would be the bullish signal obviously it's like oh it worked out because it's hindsight but you can look at this real time and kind of be like see it developing so that's a really bullish or bearish candle over here really bearish too it's interesting identifying this like if i had this information you know i see bearish super bearish bearish really heavy candles bearish a little bullish super bearish i would just be like this is not going up then it fades up a little bit so so it really all depends but it's uh it's not a perfect you know science but it is a good way to gather more information oh we were on this i'm sorry uh, but it doesn't matter uh so the hammer is definitely a candle that i tried to identify although i said i didn't do reversal patterns but i don't really know what the terms are called i just used the information you know This is kind of a good one we can mention. It's when like one of one a different color candle encompasses the previous candle. So here we can see that it opened lower and then shot up past it engulfing this candle. That's kind of bullish. Same way the other way around. If you know we get a little uptrend and then we got this red candle engulfing a green, usually it goes down. I don't really identify them too much, but it is, um, yeah, and obviously there are rules associated with identifying certain patterns or candlesticks that can make them more statistically or probability, I guess a higher probability of them being with the trend. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, we'll skip this bearish engulfing. Let's see what else we got. Oh, I got a lot of stuff. And this is the, oh, that, yeah, the cloud cover. It's a part of like a, uh, you know, engulfing pattern, but basically when you see like these really dark candles, especially a dark candle at the top of a support area or a resistance, I meant that usually signals a lot of potential or a higher probability of downward movement because like, like, when you think about it too, let's, what do we have here? Let's say we just have, we don't have any of this information but this, right? We have an up move, a little bit of a continuation. So is this, these are daily candles. So we had a few days of consolidation and then shoots up pretty rapidly, right? And then we got this day where it hits 175 bucks about. And then that day just sold off that intensely. Uh, there's no volume associated with it, but that could be another indicator. But when that's at the top of like a support or resistance area, doesn't that just look bearish? It just looks like it got rejected super hard from that level and no one even bothered to pick it up at any of these prices. So it doesn't mean the stock has to go down, but it's given us, I think an indication that people don't want it at these prices and it's clear because no one bought it, especially like if people wanted this stock, it would have been bid it up with a bigger wick here or something at least to help, you know? So the fact that it's sold off here, yeah, we got another bearish engulfing here. There's a lot of stuff going on, like at this hammerhead, you see right here? I should probably grab a pencil. Like you see this one right here. Like that's that's bearish too. So we, we literally have like a bullish candle kind of bearish, kind of kind of bullish, bullish, bearish, bear, bear. Some buying going on, but overall like the majority of these candles look pretty bearish to me. Then you got the 
this shoot up, which is, I don't know how it did that, but, but then you got this bearish candle at that support or resistance. You got some trying to buy up, then you got try again, then you one more try again, and then it just fails because it cannot get above that level. And it's like, how can you predict this move here? And it's like, well, you, you can't though, but you can say, like when I'm looking at this candle by candle, you know, that's how you, you kind of like do it. That's that's how the information is presented to you in real life. Say, like, oh, bearish candle, you know, can this, is, it, can, is this the candle that predicted this? Probably not, right? But is this one, you know, that one, the, I think this whole cluster with this, like, this, this level was just not meant to be broken technically yet. And because of that, it spilled over. This was definitely the first clue. But you don't know that until later on. But yeah, this bad clue, bad clue. All these this cluster of candles just shows that nobody wants it above that price. So it falls. Again, I'm looking at this in hindsight. But I'm trying to see in real, in real life, how would I look at this and be like, you know, what, what, what candle would I be like? That's a bad candle. Like I've had some trades literally where the candles are both bearish and I'm like, I'm getting out of this trade. I get out and it shoots up and it's like, what happened there? Um, it, it's just the kind of probability thing and what information are you going to use to predict what might happen in the near future? So again, it's not a perfect, it's not a perfect thing, but nothing, it shouldn't be though, you know. Let's see what else we got. There's obviously some more words and stuff, but... So, yeah, even, uh, yeah, this is probably at the morning and evening doji stars. So, I mean, again, it's more like this, like, this is super bearish. Like, I cannot emphasize enough how bearish that is. Can it go higher? Yeah, of course, but when I'm looking at that, that's bearish. Got this movement, it shoots up, and then boom, gets slapped down. Like, that's pretty bear. Here we got the opposite, really bullish, just the other way around. However, look at all that selling, those wicks. A lot of selling going on here. So, that you, I mean, it doesn't, I'll have to again, but it usually indicates that, again, people are selling, and they're not picking to back up at these prices. People don't want it here. It might spill over if the demand isn't there. And I mean, in this case, it did spill over. So people were buying it around, what, like 18, 19 bucks is that? And then people were selling at 25, nobody wanted it then. Uh, but yeah, those are pretty good. Maybe not even, oh no, sorry. Yeah, this is what I wanted. The shooting star and inverted hammerhead, not really necessarily the doji. But I mean, the doji with a big wick could be one, but this is definitely more common. This, basically, this, uh, the session rally could not be sustained since the shooting stars bearish signal must come after a rally yeah so when there is the rally like let's zoom back in when there is the rally here we see the rally boom big moves it eventually has to come to an end it just it can't keep going up even like tesla and uh like bitcoin rallies at the end because the price is just like, they, people have to take profit things and fundamental things have to happen so rally shoots up what actually is the I don't know maybe 20% I don't even know 15 and you can start so you start actually seeing 
So again, if we get a candle by candle, oh, big move, nice. You got actually this is pretty. This is actually bullish because you know the wick there. People bought it back up. Then kind of a neither boom candle, then a shoot up, shoot up. We can start seeing a lot of selling. People getting rid of the um, uh, the asset here. And then as we get to the C, so we can see the selling, but it's still pretty bullish. And then here, I would get a little worried. That's actually really interesting. We can see the development of the shooting stars side by side. Literally, like this is kind of shooting star or hammerhead. I don't know whatever you want to call it. But it's still bullish because of how big the body is relative to the wick. Then you see here, the wick is a lot larger than the body. Then here, the wick is enormously larger than the body. And because of that, and it's at the top of the, the move. Or, I mean, we don't know this is the top of the move, right? But we have this information, and it's been moving up. And that looks like the top. Because of that selling wick, nobody wants it at that price. And they slapped it back down to, uh, like, the session close or open, basically. Usually indicates a downward movement. It doesn't have to. I've definitely, like, AMD, I think, had one recently I was watching. Huge, like like wick like this and it still went right up right past it. it's it's a low probability thing i think but it happens yep definitely at the top of a rally we look for these especially at support or sorry, resistance levels and support levels for the other way around also if there is no resistance you can look for psychological levels like um what is this it's so hard to see it so far away but we're like 135 or something i don't know but like 150, 175 could be a, a psychological level too, like anything like that. Ending in zeros and stuff. Now there should be here the hammerheads. Hammerhead usually comes after a decline. Makes sense. So we got this decline. Then it's like it eventually the stock hits a point where like it's just low enough where people buy it. And because the buying entices more people to buy as well as the bots, they start triggering, you know, whatever. It, buy, it bids it up at certain levels. This is really bullish too because you have one hammerhead, or you have your one hammer, then you got another. Uh, an hour later, this 30 minute candles. I mean, I don't really, I don't really look at 30 minute candles, but pretty bu uh, bullish because you got the price dropped all the way to here. So people started buying, and in that 30 minutes, bought all the way back up to here, and that happened twice. Here we got a pretty bearish candle, though. Uh, kind of a reverse of this. But, uh, yeah, these individual candles are bullish itself. But again, it has to be within the cluster. It has to be, you know, you gotta develop the story. The story's a little hard to develop, you know. Maybe the market opened, you know, shot up, sold off, you know. And people bought it back, you know. I don't know. Depends how you want to view it. This is actually a good chart, too. A lot of good examples here. We, got, we literally see three super bearish candles right next to each other. Why are they bearish? Because the price is here. It shot up. And then during that entire day, these are daily candles, it shot all the way back down to here. Like, uh, nobody wants it at this price. And we got this price action from a couple days ago and a couple days ago here. So whatever price this is at, nobody wants it. We can see the selling. And this candle, yeah, these candles are super critical. I look for these all the time. I'm skipping ahead a little bit to continuation patterns because this section is really important. Uh, I don't know what that says. Anyway, let's see. Kind of just wanted to show off the ascending triangle, but basically continuation pattern. All right, I tried to, I, the, the section that I thought wasn't there, I think it's more here. So candles with trend lines. This is how basically I do all my analysis. Like you can draw a trend, basically draw trend lines interacting with, like this lines can interact with certain levels of price and how certain levels of the, or how those certain candles interact with that price um, trend line is gonna determine like bullishness, bearishness and stuff like that. Like this is a pretty decent example. Zoom in, got the price fell kind of came up, fell again, fell again, so this slope, for whatever reason, is, you know, falling support on a daily trend, or daily candles. Eventually, like, this doesn't just fall forever. Depending on the pattern you're looking, it's either 
has to break this or shoot up or whatever, but you see, again, I don't, uh, it's, it's easy to say I know what's going to happen because I have the information, but what I'm trying to look at here is like, what here is bullish, what here is bearish, well, we got one that days that this, these candles touch this trend line are heavy, like, not dark cloud, because dark cloud uh, means that it's like at a higher level, but these are really heavy body candles in red, but on this trend line, people are purchasing, buying it up. So that is something to consider. And on these two candles here, we had one day where it came down. It actually, look, look right here. Let me get the pencil. People, sorry, sorry, I keep, my camera is inverted right now because of how I'm filming. So it's just different how I usually zoom in and stuff. Um, look, we have here, we have a day the first time in this entire cluster, I mean, I guess here, a little bit in here, like people bought here, people bought here, people bought here, but sell, 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 fell. People don't want it up here, you know, sell, 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 sell. But right here, people bought, people bought more after that. And so people were buying here, it then fell, opened up less, it fell here, and then shot all the way up to here. Like this is actually, in this bearish pattern, these two candles are super bullish because of how they relate to one another compared to the rest of this, this price action. I don't know if that's going to make too much sense. Again, this is a little bit hindsight, and I understand that, but I'm just trying to see, like, what could have caused this up move based on, you know, what we're looking at right now. And again, because people were buying here before it got to that trend line, you can see in the past people would just wait until it fell to buy it, except for, I guess, a little bit here, but... The pattern didn't really develop yet until it depends like when do you when do you say oh how 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 many candles is a pattern i don't know it's it can't be i guess it could be two it could be three but realistically when i'm looking at big clusters and stuff maybe f at least five candles to me is a pattern depending on the time frame i'm looking at so i wouldn't really say this was significant until let's say one two three four five even then like if i had that like Need more candles. Anyway, though, yeah, this is bullish because we were buying here before it got to the trend line, and then especially the next day it did fall, but it got bitted way past the super big body candle. So, yeah. Anyway, let's see some more stuff. Yeah, this is a uh, oh, silver falling resistance from oh, what year is this? That's interesting. Silver daily. Usually you connect like the highest point with a hammerhead, and it, there usually is a hammer or hammerhead shooting star. I, I, it doesn't matter. This the candle with the largest wick is usually the one that I prefer to take the top of and connect it with the other one. So you got this trend line here. You obviously need two points to make a line. So we got one point here. You wait for this to develop, then you got two. I guess the kind of three points. Realistically, this could be one point two. And then you have a fall down. Now, as this comes back up, it's not just gonna the way that price behavior works. It like never it could, but it never really does this. It could go and then just shoot right past this without even like acknowledging this line. But the way it works and the way like the bots are set up and the way people trade and just the psychology of the market when this price finally does go back up to here, if it does, which over a long enough period of time, I bet it would try to attempt it. As it approaches here, there will be more sellers because of this trend line is putting some pressure on the price. Here we can see, you know, that big shoot up, people are selling here, but that's just people taking some profit. And actually, you know, here's like, so here's this wick here, if you drag that across, it's like about, uh, I guess the slope doesn't line up perfect. Maybe not actually the way my book was shaped. But like around that level 247 to or 470 is some sort of some resistance area and it makes sense too like it is a end in double zero so that usually is a psychological level then it falls you know consolidates a little bit because or i guess sells off a little bit because people are taking profits then it shoots up even though let's say you have good news and stuff and you have a lot of buying people are going to be selling because this trend line has that pressure then you can see uh it starts fading a little bit too even though these are green. 
kind of bullish candles. But um, the, the, these trend lines, it depends how strong they are, but the more points that connect to them over longer periods of time, the harder it is for this price to get past here, usually, because there's just so much, um, yeah, I guess pressure is just the, the best word to say and how that, that interacts there. I think that's uh, enough of the continuation. Let's see what else we could chat about. Cancel trend. Yeah, he goes into like uh, with the oscillators and stuff. I think like the RSI, but like you could use it, but I just I haven't found it important. You got the moving averages. I mean, like what I've learned is like, yeah, this looks great on paper. Oh, I just buy every time that moving average, you know, hits that line. It's like, yeah. It works, and it just works so much better in hindsight because how the can like this derived line. Actually, this line is derived from the price and like volume and stuff. So, as the price and volume is happening, it's putting it's getting put into an equation. Do, they, do we have the equation here? I don't think so. Uh, it's getting put into an equation, and because of that, it has a lagging effect. So, I guess the best way to put it is the analogy, hopefully this makes sense to people, but, like, people think the tail is wagging the dog, I think that's the analogy. And it's not the price and volume are moving this line. So, at, so, yeah, this is a good way to put it. As the closer this line is to the newest point of data, it has the least... influence on this line because how these equations work or how um, this equation works as we get like it at this it would have like perfect this whole cluster basically it would have perfect like synergy with the line basically showing good stuff as we get closer because when you put it into the equation it has that lagging effect it doesn't look as good so it's one of those things like you look at this I'm like wow it, it came perfectly balanced well perfectly balanced and it's like yeah but because as as we get new data this data gets taken off so it's constantly shifting the equation and because of that like it's always gonna more perfectly match the data in the back of the the pattern or the the trend time frame you're looking at as opposed to the front so Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> I'm sorry if it didn't, but it's hard it's hard to explain because I think it's easier to explain if I had the equation and I had like a, I guess I have a chart, but I guess a better way of explaining it. But just know that all almost all indicators or all indicators, yeah, have a lag in effect. And it it always looks better in the past because how the equations are just the nature of the equations themselves with the price and volume the price action and volume are always going to be dominant over them so it looks like so in hindsight it looks like this bounced off this line but if you go back so if you take all these candles out go back to this time this line would not be here because of how it works same thing with like the uh, standard deviation zones every day because we use daily candles, or when I use the standard deviation zones every day, one candle would get deleted, one get, would get added, and it would add, it, it, you'd have to reevaluate the equation basically, and because of that, it would more fit the data each time. As you go back on that data, it looks better and better. Be or it, it more fitly, it, it fits the data more each day, same thing with here, it's gonna fit the data more each day because of how it works. So yeah, again, as you get back further, this, this is super important, that's why I'm, I'm harping on it. Because, uh, because it's just important <laughs> because I think people just get the wrong impression about these and they, and they think they can forward project this into the future and stuff and it's very not necessarily the thing. Uh, is that Roku? No, no, not Roku. Ju, Ju Hito, Ju Kori. No, that's the that's color though or something. Ascending triangles. I'm just wish I knew where it was. Yeah, this is a great book, though. I highly, highly recommend you purchase it just for your.
yourself and just feel like your bookshelf too. Like here we go. You got the whole thing about volume confirming prices, higher volume hammerheads such as this chart decreases the chance for a correction to the hammerhead lower. I mean, we didn't even touch the volume here, but got that hammerhead here. We got that high volume. Got this pattern here, but this one too lower for um, lower volume in comparison. It's just, uh, I mean, here's the thing, too. So, what this book made me realize is there's so much to learn. And there's literally, it's important, I guess, at first to learn about everything at a very base level to get an understanding of what's possible or what's out there that you can learn. Just because you can learn it doesn't mean you should. I just picked some things in this book that I thought were important, and I kind of back-tested, but I also used it real-time to see, is what I'm learning, can I apply it right now, and practice it, and get a bit, like bigger database of whether this thing is good or bad for my investing and trading like principles. And I mean, obviously, so you have to try a bunch of stuff, you know, work with yourself too. Over time, you start deleting, oh, I don't need that, I don't need that RSI indicator, that, that, let's say, Bollinger Band or that candlestick pattern, it doesn't work for me. Start finding, you start narrowing things down that work for you. Then you come up with, okay, like, two things work for me. I'm just gonna, if I see those two things in the market, I might take the trade or I'm gonna consider, you know, buying wheat, let's say, or selling. You don't get, again, I harp on this, kind of, but you don't make money by learning everything and knowing all this stuff and you know acting all smart this isn't like a test you know you know i can test it on this the, you know, again the whole reason why people learn this stuff is so they can try to gain an, a small edge over a small part of a market and understanding of that and understand your edge so you can make money that's the goal in this to make money and maybe have a little fun and stuff but like there's about like 300 pages of techniques and stuff and it, it's great information i'm not i'm not like i guess uh what's the word degrading stephen and stephen his work because this is very important and very great information but for the for a normal person this entire book is not needed it's just read it understand everything in the book on a very surface level and then pick the things that you think are super critical and important and fit your like beliefs and stuff and then just test it try it out see if it actually works and um yeah and if it works and you make money you get some good trades and stuff and but yeah you don't get cookie or brownie points for understanding all this and applying all this stuff because the, the best traders don't do this stuff or don't do all this stuff. They just pick what, what makes them money and they just replicate that over and over again. Yeah, that's the thing that I think I learned most from this book because there's just so much information out there. How do you digest it all? And it's like, you don't. You just don't. And, uh, yeah, I, th I don't think people say that on YouTube a lot or just, you know, it looks fancy knowing all this stuff. It's like, oh, how, how good of an understanding of the market do you have? It's like, well, you know, it depends. Um, yeah, I definitely would spend some time with a book like this. We can make some more videos. But it's also, it's a textbook. It's a resource, you know. You refer back to it here and there. And all this stuff is kind of like online and do maybe not all of it, but a lot of it. But me, I just learn best when I'm reading a book, so. But yeah, anyway this video up this also sounded so good when i tapped on it before so maybe i'll do it again <laughs> but we yeah, hope you learned some stuff hopefully this doesn't get put to the wrong audience because that last video got so many dislikes but hopefully um yeah this is a great book too and i think i need to i actually i don't think i need to reread this book because i already picked out what was important to me but yeah hopefully you enjoyed the video hopefully you learned some stuff Steve Nielsen, Chapel, or Chapel. <laughs>